Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sunday Omni. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and be sure to like this video as well. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. This way you'll be notified every single time I upload a new video on my channel. So get in here, everyone. The campfire started. This is a live video. And in this video, an update regarding Jeezy and Jeannie Mai. And the man is sharing everything in his new breakup album. He's come out with a double album that I'm going to talk to you guys about in this video. And it is very clear to me that Jeezy is talking about Jeannie Mai. All right. The man has been hurt. The man is making it very clear that real men don't cheat. Okay. And I told you guys in the past as well that I heard that Jeezy never cheated on Jeannie Mai. Nope. That's what I heard. And I heard that when he's in a relationship, allegedly he's a loyal man. And I'm going to tell you guys why I think he doesn't cheat as well and why that's part of his values as well, based on the type of people that he hangs out with and his mentors. All right. And what those men believe in that industry all right, as well. All right. So ladies, get in here. The campfire is getting hot and a rapper is heartbroken, disappointed and calling out the woman that broke his heart, in my opinion. Good morning, Sergeant King. Great to see you, love. You're the first. Thank you so much for the greeting. I always love seeing you here. Sergeant King is our military lady who's retired. Um, give this video a thumbs up as you're getting in here. Let's get started, you guys. So Jeezy has released a double album, okay? And it's called I May Forgive, But I Don't Forget. Very powerful, you guys. Usually rappers, I mean, their titles are not this serious, right? It, this is serious to me. Um, he has some very interesting song titles as well. All right. Let's just talk about that really quickly. Um, some of the song titles that really caught my attention. Um, let me read it to you. Very interesting titles. Uh he has one about not cheating. I want, I want to read you guys the lyrics. And it's very clear. I mean, this is black and white. He dedicated this album. He didn't dedicate his book to Jeannie Mai, his ex-wife, but he definitely has dedicated this breakup album to her and just the trauma, the pain that she has put him through, it appears, okay? He says, tonight you know I'm taking my time. Kiss her on, kiss her kiss, kiss on her neck, neck. Sorry, you guys. I, I guess this, you know, I have, probably have to wrap this out, but um, something like that. Okay. Let me try again and just try to say it the way maybe he may have said it. Okay. Tonight, you know, I'm taking my time. Kiss on her neck, neck. Just watch your tone when you talking to me. It's about respect. Who do we know that has no respect, loves to yell, very aggressive. Jeezy has asked her to go for counseling. Um, she doesn't know uh, boundaries and she doesn't even treat her mom with respect. She also yells at her mom as well. Guess who, who he's talking about? You guys, it's very clear. Very, very clear. Um, Lovers and Friends YouTube channel featured Jeannie Mai talking about her dragon temper and anger and how she would trigger this man as well. Take a listen. I didn't notice that I had a hot temper until I got with Jeezy and here's a person who is my equal and I really respect. And when I would spew some of my old habits and he was like, uh-uh, like who, that's not flying here. And also, it would trigger him to come back at me with things where I was like, who the fuck do you think you are? But I was triggering him. So through work, we learned that we both have certain habits that to the everyday person from friends, family, fans, they'll never see it. Mm -hmm. But to the person who loves us deep enough, you can press that button and boom, the dragon comes out. And we both have it. So we had to work on that. I want you to also listen here about how they were in counseling and therapy and stuff like that. 
and how he also advised her to get help with her anger issues with her mom as well. Take a listen. Do we call you Dr. Beth or Beth Beth? Beth is really good. Just okay. Well, first off, I want to thank Beth and my mom for being here. Thank you so much. I heard about Beth from a friend who has been seeing Beth for a long time. And I actually was looking for Beth for me and Jay. Jay and I do counseling, but I'm always open to try new counselors. You and I got in that fight and I was so angry at you. And I really thought we weren't going to talk ever again. And then Jay asked me, why don't you have a therapy session with your mom? I'm very nervous to go to therapy with you because I'm a little scared of how you'll be. I don't know how you'll behave. I don't know if you'll like it. I don't know if it'll make us worse. You're talking about a therapy, like a counselor, mm -hmm. right? I'm thinking because it costs too much money. I don't want to go. And number two, I don't think I'm wrong. So why should I go to the counselor? Maybe I'm wrong. You know, hell no. But, you know. <laughs> and then Jeannie Mai also accuses Jeezy of bringing out her anger. Okay. She said that, you know, she had her anger under control, but he brought her anger out because he keeps pushing her, pushing her and pushing her. Take a listen. Mom, I know that I have your same temper. I never back down. Now with Jay, when he pushes me, my temper came back a little bit. So I wanted to go to counseling so that Jay and I can learn how to communicate better. And now we're getting better at it. Now, you guys, those are the receipts. It's so obvious that this album is dedicated to Jeannie Mai. All right. Very, very obvious. Um, her anger issues or out of control. The disrespect was too much for this guy. All right. Another thing he says as well in this album, I want you guys to listen to this. Take a look. Okay. He says in this song, uh, the song is called Don't Cheat, I believe. Okay. Let me, just in case you guys want to listen to it as well. Um, let me pull it here for you guys. Okay, so there's just some things in the lyrics, you guys, I can't I can't say, right? Because you know, some of these lyrics are um, you know, some some of the lyrics are vulgar, right? So I can't really say some of these things, but this is from the song Don't Cheat. All right. Um so Jeezy says, and I ain't about and I ain't about you playing them games. I know my worth, worth. Some of these bees ain't for the streets. They for the earth. Damn. Wow. So basically, you guys, I am not a rap interpreter or anything like that, but I guess what he's trying to say is, um, I, I, maybe I shouldn't even guess because I might be completely wrong. Is it like they don't even deserve to be in the streets? Like they should be in the ground. Like, what What do you guys think? Is that, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like they should be in the, they shouldn't even be roaming in the streets. They should be gone gone, gone, underground, deep underground, you know, under some soil. Is that what he's saying here, you guys? Um, that's kind of my interpretation of that, is he has no respect for women who cheat, women who are disrespectful. Another thing as well, in the album, okay, these are some of the song type, like the song titles, okay? in the album called I Might Forgive, all right? Um, so the first one is called I Might Forgive. There's a, there's a title, there's a song that's like, he has, yeah, so yeah, so he has one called Trust No One. Remember I told you guys, every time during his book tour, he was saying he doesn't trust anyone, including Jeannie Mai. The guy was like, so you don't trust your wife? And he was like, oh, um, well, uh, I don't, I don't mean it like that or anything. Sorry, you guys. I, can you guys hear me? You guys comment if you can hear me. I just went to a different screen. So I don't know if I'm still here with you guys. Can you still hear me? 
I just went to a different screen and then I wasn't sure if um, we're still connected. I hope so. I really hope so. I'm gonna wait for you guys to come through and um, and just confirm if you can still hear me. Let's see. Oh, you can hear me. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Give the studio a thumbs up and uh, show your support to the channel. I appreciate all of you very much for being here. Oh, D. John, great to see you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, yes, happy to see you. Laura, thank you so much for being here as well. So anyway, um, back to what I was telling you guys. The first album is called I Might Forgive. He has a song titled Trust No One. Then he has another one called This Too Shall Pass. This is like a rapper's breakup album, okay? So if you are a man that's into hip hop and stuff, you're going through a breakup and everything, I would suggest you get this album. Um, this is this will be really good for you, okay? Uh, another song title he has called, is called Don't Deserve Me. Who do you think he's talking to? You guys, this is so obvious. It's a dedicated album specifically to Jeannie Mai. Okay, specifically to yours truly, you guys. Um, it is so obvious. All right, this man is trying to have the last laugh. Okay, everything he's been through, he's trying to profit from his story. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to write it in the song. Everything I've been through with this lady, I'm going to write it in a song and I'm going to make money from it because that's what these celebrities do. Okay. They're not going to share their stuff for free. They want to ensure that there's going to be something that they're going to get out of it. And it, it is what it is, you guys. Um, let me keep going. There's more. There's more. Okay. Um, <laughs> then there's the song I told you guys, Don't Cheat. All right, because he believes that real men don't cheat. And I wanted to share that really quickly about why I believe he has that philosophy as well. Because you guys, a lot of guys that do, are in business and all that kind of stuff, or for example, he was a man, you know, back in the day in the streets, doing a lot of dangerous things and stuff like that. Trust is very important in the streets. Respect is really important in the streets. And for some guys, it's against their own moral compass you know, to, to deal with anyone who's ever cheated. Like if you hear someone said that they, you know, they betrayed their family members, they betrayed their lover, like someone they're married to, like their wife, their husband. Okay. When you hear someone say something like that, and you want to enter into a business relationship with that person, or even a personal relationship with that person, some people believe it's not wise to, to, um, it's not wise to actually do business with someone who's a cheat, regardless of whether you cheated on your husband or your wife. If someone's going to do business with you, they can't necessarily trust you as well as a business partner because you have the ability to betray people who are in your corner. You have the ability to, um, yeah, to uh, not be loyal. OK, and for some people, loyalty is royalty. OK, and also in business, you know, if you if you've cheated and you're a cheater and stuff like that um, and you're so proud, just telling everybody, oh, I cheated. I'm a cheater. I've done this. Um, there are some people that that's just not attractive and they are judging you for that. OK, so if you are somebody who's maybe looking for business opportunities or even friendships, building relationships with people, a lot of people in general, for, they don't trust people who have a history of cheating, not just in relationships. If you can cheat on your spouse, someone who's actually that you chose OK, to marry and to love and to be committed to. What are you then capable of doing to someone who? is going to is potentially interested in being your friend or doing business with you. So the kind of guys that um Jeezy hangs out with, like Robert Greene for example, I actually have his book right next to me here on my on my table, but like Robert Greene, 
Um, you know, he hangs out with TD Jakes. He hangs out with, um, oh, just so many, so many of these uh, motivational guys and business guys and all that kind of stuff. You know, the big guys in the industry. Um, a lot of them look at character. OK, and so I think that the don't cheat. I, I, allegedly, I heard he's doesn't he never cheated on Jeannie Mai. He was loyal to her. Um, she apparently, based on these lyrics here, um, really hurt the guy. And he even said in his statement when he talked about divorcing her, he says that it was not easy for him. It was not something that just came to him lightly. You know, um, I think he gave her chances after chances. The disrespect was out of control as well. And the guy just couldn't take it. All right. Anymore. Enough was enough. And um, yeah. And I think that this album is a breakup album and it's dedicated to her. You guys, it's not dedicated to anyone else. It's dedicated to her. The disrespect that he experienced from Jeannie Mai is probably more disrespect, more than anything, the disrespect that he received from her mother or her family members. It's his own wife that was disrespecting him. And that's why I said that Jeannie Mai also didn't respect him. When she just started bringing in the family members, it's not really, it's not the family member's fault. It's not the mom's fault or the brother's fault. It's because they believed you know, like the mama Mai believed that her daughter is fine with this. Her daughter approves this. It was up to her to put a boundary like, mom, you can't come and stay here with us. Or brother, you can't come and stay with us. But instead, she just allowed it to happen and expected Jeezy then to go and try to tell these people like, you look, get out of my house. I don't think it was in him to do that. Like, I'm not going to do this. These are my in-laws. I'm not going to tell them to get out of my house. It's Jeannie that has to talk to her mom and her brother. So there's a lot of um, things. I think that Jeannie did not respect the guy's boundaries and the disrespect was just too much for this guy uh, to handle. So Jeannie, um, please uh, go get your album. Uh, it's out now. Okay. It's a double album dedicated for you, uh, Miss Mai, and it's called I Might Forgive. but I won't, I won't forget. Okay. So go get your album out. It's specifically for you. Um, it, it's, it's deep. Everything you need to know that GZ feels or felt during the relationship, it's all there for you, Jeannie. Just go take a listen and, um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good. Okay. But go ahead and listen. Uh, maybe don't have your daughter around listening to these lyrics because, He's talking about you. Okay. Um, he is talking about you. So um, just get the album, relax, and maybe don't play it around Mama Mai because if she listens to it, she's going to figure it out. Your brother will also figure it out. Just listen to the album in private. And uh, this is your opportunity to hear your ex husband um, express himself to you. Okay. So yeah, you guys, it's very clear that um, this was his time, okay? This was his time to get all his feelings. I think I said everything regarding uh, the albums. Who do you guys think this is dedicated to? I mean, wow. Oh, another song he has, a track called Delusional. OMG. Delusional. Delusional. Wow. Another track he has as well called No Choice. <laughs> and another one that he has is called Claim to Fame. Oh, my goodness, you guys. You know he's talking about Jeannie Mai. Because even a lot of his fans were like, you know, saying like Jeannie Mai is just using him, you know, to be, get more fame and all this kind of stuff to get more noticed and all this. So, you know, he's talking about her. It's so obvious. Okay. It's very obvious. You know, he is so unbothered because he is just like done. Wow. 
Wow, 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 Jeannie Mai. Let me see what you guys have to say. Jeannie, go get your album. It's out now. Go get your album. Yeah, D. John, you can't trust a cheater. You guys, these are some people's like moral compass. They won't be friends with someone who is a cheater. They don't care, even if it's in a relationship. If they want to be your friend, they don't trust being friends with someone who's a cheater. They don't trust doing business with a cheater. A cheat is a cheat. And some people just can't trust that kind of person. And for someone like Jeezy that has had a rough life, has had friends and people betray him and all that kind of stuff, he's going to be more sensitive to anyone in his circle that can cross him. And by the way, I don't blame him, you guys. I don't blame him. I also don't trust people like that either. All right. So I don't blame him. All right. If people can betray someone that's in their corner, someone who's close to them, someone who loves them, it's not wise to do any kind of business with that person, develop any kind of friendship with that person, or even enter a relationship with that person. It's just a turnoff. You just can't take people like that seriously. It's, it's not even attractive. I don't even know why some people even share that kind of information about themselves. Like as if they don't realize people are judging you when you say that. You know, they think it's funny. They think it's whatever. No, people are really judging you and thinking, hmm, okay, good to know. Thanks for letting me know that you are a cheat because now I know I can't be friends with you. Now I know I can't trust you. That's what you tell people when you share that kind of stuff about yourself is you can't be trusted, that you're two-faced, that behind closed doors, you could be doing something else. You don't keep your word. And for some people, your word is everything. Okay. Like for me, I really value people who keep their word. I really respect that. I really appreciate that. Uh, people who walk, you know, and talk, everything just matches. Okay. Um, they walk the walk, they talk the talk, you know, well, not just talk the talk. Talk is cheap, right? But, um, you know, they mean what they say and they follow through. I really respect that, you know. Just really genuine people, all right? So um, Jeannie Mai, um, wow, Jeannie Mai is now really going to go after this guy financially. She is getting ready to destroy. I already heard she's getting ready to destroy this man, all right? Um, she's already lawyered up and everything. Um, this album coming out now, she knows it's dedicated to her, and she's even more pissed off. So... It's one thing, you know, Jeannie Mai was begging this guy, like, take me back. I don't want to be a single mom. Please don't do this to me. You know, this is embarrassing me in my Asian community. My Vietnamese people are now talking about me. Please don't do this to me. You know, I have a biracial child now. I was with you as a rapper. Like, don't you know that this can damage me? She went, she begged. It didn't work. Now she's angry. Now she's lawyered up. You guys, in my past video, my previous video, I showed you guys her lawyer as well um, that she has lawyered up with. Okay. She, I'm hearing allegedly wants custody of the child. Like she wants to have the child full time with her. Oh yeah. Allegedly, that's what I'm hearing. That's why Jeannie Mai is posting so many images right now of herself out with the child and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, they want to portray it like Jeezy is just a guy that's hanging out with the guys all the time. He's not really fit to be a full-time or half-time dad or anything like that. So, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's the angle that they're trying to go. And uh, she's going, she's actually fighting him dirty in court. All right. That's her lawyer right there, you guys. His name is Randall, Randall Kessler. That's Jeannie Mai's lawyer right there that's ready to fight him and try to get his money so Jeannie Mai can get all the money that she deserves, according to her, okay? So um, that's why she's posting up every opportunity now. She's posting pictures of herself, trying to show that she is mother of the year. 
Okay. So that's the goal is, oh, I'm so responsible. I'm such a great mom and all this kind of stuff. My ex-husband is out golfing all day while I'm the one caring for our daughter. So that's the angle allegedly that I'm hearing that the lawyer and Jeannie Maya want to take is to show that this guy is not ready to, you know, take care of family or anything like that. Um, so they're, yep, that's the angle. Jeannie Mai, your album is going to tell us a lot more, you guys. If you listen to the album in full, if there's anything in those lyrics that you feel like is also targeting Jeannie Mai, please let us know because it is so obvious. This is, wow. Wow. There's no love songs at all, you guys. If you're trying to listen to a love song in this album, this album is not a love song. OK, this album is about a man that has been hurt, betrayed. Does not trust nobody. Doesn't want to deal with. OK, so this is pretty much based on the tracks. OK, he doesn't trust anybody. He wants this pain that he has within him to pass. All right. Jeannie Mai never deserved him. She was using him as a claim to fame. All right. She's delusional. He's telling us everything in the tracks, the name of the tracks. He warned her not to cheat. She did. And he's saying, but I don't forget. So he's in the process of trying to forgive her because he said, I might forgive. There's a possibility. OK, but. Unfortunately, it's just, it's too hard. What she, what she did is too much. The disrespect that this woman showed him was just too much, okay? The unbearable pain that this lady caused him. Aw, thanks, Laura. Thank you. You know, wow, that's just amazing to hear this from you, Laura, because there are some ladies that don't like it when I laugh in my videos. <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm laughing again just because of that. Yeah, there's some ladies that don't like how I laugh and they don't like me laughing at all, which is so interesting, you guys. These stories are so interesting. It's hard sometimes just not to laugh at some of the stuff. So, Laura, thanks, love. I really appreciate it. And you guys heard what Dijon had to say as well, right? Can't trust a cheater. Laura is laughing. Yeah, Laura, I know there's some ladies that don't want me to laugh. I just don't understand. Some people are so strict, like even on people's like YouTube channel, some subscribers are like, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Oh my gosh. Then I also had some people I told you from the Asian community that was like, um, don't you know that Asians, you know, we are uh, dominant, like, you know, Jeannie. Yeah, they're like, yeah, Jeannie doesn't need him because as Asians, we are more dominant than Blacks in the food industry, in, what did they say? In the food industry, uh, what else? In different markets. Oh, yeah, in the nail industry, uh, in the supermarket industry. They just, they're just, like, we are not talking about this right now. This is not about business, okay? <laughs> they're like, we are more dominant in these areas. We know that. And we've already heard this from the Asian community. You guys love money, okay? And you guys marry up. I already understand that. I'm African too. I totally understand. That's no problem. But that's not what we're talking about, dominating in certain industries that Blacks are not dominating in and all that kind of stuff. But you guys still love Black culture. And that's the reason why, you know, Jeannie Mai's Asian elder was calling her uh, a ghetto Asian, OK, because there is a specific amount of a certain amount of Asians that are into black culture. So other Asians separate themselves completely from those Asians as well. Also, we had a um, Vietnamese millionaire called Brent Pham also saying that Jeannie Mai is all for the money. So we were just listening to people from the community. All right. And so anyway, let's take a listen. Henry resilience YouTube channel. Credits to him. He's the one that featured this Vietnamese millionaire who spoke out about the culture. So take a listen. Korean, Vietnamese, um, I've noticed in my experience, they're very about status and materialistic uh, benefit. 
I've noticed it's it's a, it's a common theme. I see it everywhere. And um, probably the Japanese women, they're probably the only ones that are not like this. But I would say the Chinese, Korean, and Vietnamese are all like this. They um, have that, that dragon in them, as she said. The dragon, yeah, yeah. Like the the the, the hidden dragon. Like, the, you you know, kind of trying to hidden dragon. They, they hide the they hide their their true intentions um to get their benefits and Jean, she, she she does a very good job at hiding it she's very manipulative Ooh. um because she she claims she's she's real right she she's 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 she keeping it real uh-huh. she does that on certain topics that are easy to be real about to hide um her not her bs Ooh, Brent is based now. Brent, for for the audience, can you just tell everyone your nationality so they don't think you're just going after Vietnamese? I'm Vietnamese, Ooh. and um, my parents, my relatives, they moved on a cargo ship because they were so desperate to get out of there because the culture is so propagandized. Okay. Like the the wow, and there's more. Jeannie, she has some. Her parents kept some of that um, materialistic uh, benefit, like that kind of culture. Um, I just, it, it's so transparent to me, but to okay. other people, they so, don't see it. But so I be, see it because and, you're Vietnamese. You're 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 trained to see it because you've seen it so much. You can spot it a mile away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like she 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 claims she's so real. No, she's trying to hide her truth, like. Like I'm so real. I'm. I'm. No, you're. You're trying to hide who you are. So, and, um, do you think that she didn't have the kid with the first husband because she was the primary breadwinner, or do you? Yes. Oh. Yes, the money. <laughs> oh, she, it was shit. all about the money with her. Um, the Freddie. I. She didn't want to have. She. She was desperate for a marriage, the status symbol of a marriage. So she. But she. True. She truly, in her heart, didn't want to have kids with him because of the money. Ooh. And um. Yeah, so but she wanted that marriage because in Asian culture, it, there's a there's a pressure to get married for some reason, and I I think that's common in all cultures, but particularly Asian cultures. Wow, so you guys, when I've been playing these uh, videos and just hearing from the Vietnamese community, some Vietnamese ladies actually came over to our tribe. And we're actually really upset about that. And they were saying also that they believe that black women are jealous of Jeannie Mai. Okay, is there any black ladies in the comments here? Um, sorry, as I know that you're, I think, yeah, sorry, as you're a black lady. Uh, you guys, there's nothing to be jealous of about Jeannie Mai. Who wants to live with Mama Mai? Who wants to live with Brother Mai? Who wants to be dumped by a rapper who wants to be dumped by a rapper oh my goodness a rapper that makes double your income you're the first wife he ever had and this guy is showing that he is more classier than you are and this man does more charity work than she does Oh, yeah, you guys. He does tons of charity work. He's also a philanthropist. Jeannie Mai lies about giving to people in Vietnam. He was attracted to her because he thought that she gives back. But he actually mentioned that she's cheap and very frugal. She prefers to save her own money. She doesn't like to give money to the poor or anything like that. She's not generous. Who would want to be dumped by a rapper? That's when you know that this lady was really, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, let's just listen to the Vietnamese elder talk about Jeannie Mai because she knows Jeannie Mai in person. She knows her in real life. Okay. At a personal level. Okay. So let's take a listen. Arizona, but I'm Vietnamese and I actually know Jeannie Mai. We traveled to Vietnam together. So really? There's some background oh my story. gosh. She is <laughs> here. <laughs> she is defending her friend, Jenny Ma. No, 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 no. Not a friend. In fact, I have a lot of dirt uh, on it. She, um, but but the, the the marriages that collapsed, she, she went to Vietnam with a group um, where she claimed that she was helping 
the poor Vietnamese. Um, and my my friends who are co-friends with her wanted to travel and, and look at uh, the different um, nonprofit organization of which she she uh, that that's how we had the interaction. But it turned out that she went back to the to the U.S. and claimed that she was she was uh, donating to all of these organizations, which she did not. It was a marketing ploy. So yeah. just based on that, just just based on that attitude alone, um, I figured she Jeezy will lose his shirt definitely. <laughs> mm. because, because if she's taking, if she's profiting from the poor of her own countrymen, she is definitely going to take both his shorts his pants and his shoes wow so you think she's definitely gonna you think she's gonna contest the prenup oh for sure for sure now now let's go back to the difference between the dragon ladies and the tiger ladies mm -hmm. the difference is for the vietnamese immigrants which really haven't been in the u.s that long right so we're talking about mo not more than about, about 50 years mm -hmm. the dragon ladies come out of what the vietnamese american called ghetto asians which is you have this attitude of very urban, sort of commingling with it, um, and, and living with the urban culture, and growing up from it, never taking the education route. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have this idea of like Asians being very studious. Those are the what you call the tiger chicks, which eventually becomes the tiger moms. Mm -hmm. They get their MBA, they get their law degree, they get their, their MDs, and then they marry into a higher profession, go up the ladder build the build the forging with their their husbands and they teach their kids to also pursue that educational route wow. so how you guys if, if, if you're actually just still um, curious about dating asians look at their mothers if you look at jenny Mai's mom mm -hmm. she, you can tell right away where the anger comes from really so when you make Okay, so there you have it. You know, this is a Vietnamese elder who said that Jeannie Mai lied about doing some philanthropy work in Vietnam. She came back to the States and lied and said that, she, you know, she gave and she never did. Okay, uh, but this man continues to give. He just had a gala called like the Snow Gala where he says he loves the kids. He loves giving them bicycles. He loves paying for things for children, helping them out in the community and all that kind of stuff. Jeannie Mai, on the other hand, her elders have said she's not generous. All right. I heard Jeezy in an interview when he was doing his book tour. He said that she just prefers to save her money. She does not like to give out money. Okay. It's just, it's too much. It is really too much. Um, sorry, yes. So you guys, the ladies here, the black ladies here have said they're not jealous of the situation. I mean, who would want to have a mom like Mama Mai who tells you that she almost deleted you before you were born? Who tells you that her father did not like the fact that, well, her father thought you were ugly and dark. Like, come on. Soraya says, Jeannie is more humiliated that a black man, a rapper, is divorcing her. Yep. Yep. You guys, this is, let's just be honest. I, whew. Even me too, I would be embarrassed, you guys. I mean, let's just put ourselves in her shoes. Uh, wow. For a, you, you know if a rapper has to get rid of you? That's, that's really, that says a lot. To me, that says a lot. For a rapper to break up with you, that already says too much for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. He even said in his interview that he's more classier than Jeannie Mai. He has had to tell her to calm down and not yell at people. Oh, yeah. He said this at the School of Greatness. If you watch that interview, I believe, yeah, I think it was the School of Greatness where he said that he's more classier than Jeannie Mai. When a rapper thinks they're classier than you, you know you have a problem. When a rapper won't even tolerate disrespect from you. She really thought that she could walk all over this guy. 
What gave her the confidence? You guys, I'm black. And if I was in a relationship with a rapper, well, okay. First of all, I have dated a rapper in my 20s when I was young, okay? Um, and anyway, he was a good boyfriend to me and everything. I never disrespected him, okay? Never disrespected him, even until the end. I still, you know, even when I broke up with him, I even told him he's going to find a great girl in the future, but I don't think I'm the one for him in the future. Everything respectful, even if he sees me until now, very respectful. There's no issue. Okay, I, I myself, I, but by the way, the rapper I dated, he, his music is different. Okay, his music, he, he raps, he's not, he's like a rapper that raps about like conscious hip hop kind of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Not this kind of rapping, not the street rapper. Okay, this is the rapper that's uh, kind of like, um, I don't know, how would I describe him? Like, their rapping is more, like, um, more like, yeah, they're not using the B word and stuff like that in their rapping. Their rapping is just, it's good. It's good. It's, it's good rapping that I like. Okay. So it's, it's just really good rapping that I like very intellectual rapping. Okay. If that makes sense, but not vulgar, not vulgar. Not vulgar at all. Good, good rap. Okay. But anyway, back to Jeannie Mai. The fact that she thought that she could walk all over the sky is very interesting to me. All right. Um, but even so, even I've dated just black men too, right? And been with black men. My partner is black. I'm not going to be like, no, acting like this, the rage and all this kind of stuff. Where does this come from? Where does this come from? Why does she feel like she can challenge this rapper? Somebody that came from the streets. What made her think she can do this? It's the audacity, the confidence that Jeannie Mai had that just shocks me every time. And I think that Jeannie Mai thought that she was special. Okay? That's how I take it. She thought she's special because she's Vietnamese and she, she was even saying she has culture and all that kind of stuff. And all Jeezy does is just speak South to the daughter, but she's got her Vietnamese culture and all this. Jeannie Mai, first of all, is not a traditional person. Okay. No. Her own mom, they are not a traditional family, a traditional Vietnamese family. Okay. This has been confirmed to me already from her own community. All right. Just like that lady that was talking, her elder also said that she is a ghetto Asian. That's how they refer to someone like Jeannie Mai and Mama Mai. OK, they don't think very highly of Asians like this. Oh, yes, you guys like common. Oh, my God. Yes, he likes common like common. Yes, that's and I don't like common. You guys, I don't like that guy. OK, in his dating life, his personal life. I don't like common. You guys know that, right? Because He's always misleading women. He's a very confused man. I've warned you guys about that rapper. Uh, but yes, the way he raps and stuff like that, that kind of rapping. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, Anika. Yeah, that's how he did his rapping. But very respectful guy, though, comes from a good family. So it's different. He's not a Jeezy, okay? He's not a Jeezy. His dad's a doctor, highly educated family, all of them. All right. So very, very good family. OK. And good values as well. And he's a married man now, has a family, everything. I knew he was always going to be responsible, a responsible man. OK. So um, so not a Jeezy. OK. This is a guy that has family values and all that kind of stuff. All right. So not your typical rapper. But anyway, still. OK. When you deal with black guys, black guys, they value respect. They are not going to be tolerating disrespect, even in the workplace. They're not going to tolerate disrespect in their personal home, in their relationships, and then also in their workplace. I don't know a black man, even if, you guys, if I even knew a black man that would tolerate disrespect, by the way, I don't respect those kind of guys anyway. If you are a man that's willing to allow people to walk all over you and disrespect you, I don't respect that at all. Okay, so 
if pe you're allowing someone to do that to you and you you keep tolerating that, to me, that's your fault. You need to stand up for yourself. All right. You need to stand up for yourself. You need to use your voice. So I don't know that because, again, you know, I am African. If you know anything about African men, too, they are used to having respect, especially in their household. They're going to demand that. OK, so uh, for Jeannie Mai, I think she felt like, you know, this guy, he's lucky to be with me. He is lucky to be with me. She thought she was the bigger star. But the thing is, more people know Jeezy, in my opinion, than they know Jeannie Mai. A lot of people didn't even know who she was. OK, Jeannie Mai is of now, but she hasn't been around for a long time. OK, but I think she thought she was more of a star than him and all that kind of stuff. But the truth is, Jeezy has more reach than she does. He has more influence. Do you see if you go to his Instagram and you see how people really like his fans are really for him, although Jeannie Mai's fans are there and they are attacking him. I shared that with you guys in my previous videos. They are coming for him and all that kind of stuff. Um, they will be gone soon. They're going to get tired and leave him alone after maybe a, a few months. They're going to leave him alone. But anyway, Jeannie acted like this relationship meant something to her. Like it was so important to her. But it's really clear now to all of us that she did this man dirty. It's so obvious. It is so obvious. And some of Jeannie Mai's fans still cannot believe this. They can't believe that Jeannie betrayed this man. They can't believe it. But you guys, why would you go begging someone, leave Los Angeles, go all, sorry, leave, yeah, leave Los Angeles, go all the way to Atlanta, to this man's mansion, and beg him to take you back if you are not a problem? It's so obvious. So nobody is jealous of her, okay? So if you are a Vietnamese lady listening to this, um, on behalf of my sisters who are present here, we're not jealous of, um, of this um, family or of Jeannie Mai or anything like this. Um, I don't wake up every day saying I want to be like Jeannie Mai. I want to have Mama Mai as my mom, a woman that, you know, wanted to delete me before I was born, all this kind of stuff. No. Okay. Um, I can't. This is just, this is not going to be a mom I'm going to choose. A mom that also will call you evil or devil as well. I like that. I thought I walked in the house. She yelled at me. What do you think? You shocked too. Papa my shocked too because that time she yelling. What do you think? Just Honestly, mom, I think you're out of control. I think you're out of control. I think all this hello. Look at Jeezy walking in the background all the time. Look at him witnessing this. He's in the back right there. Every day, there's a match. There's always going to be a fight. An argument. It's never ending. The mom always calling her a devil. Oh, I can't. You are my daughter. Why are you yelling at me in front to Papa Mai and in front to Jenny? You make him feel- I didn't feel guilty. I loved it. Thank you for leaving me extra well, pancakes. Well, how can you feel guilty with the I'm devil? So happy like I you. extra pancakes. You are devil. That's why you don't feel guilty. If you are a human being, you feel guilty. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. My Black sisters, do you want a mom that's calling you a devil, calling your face a devil face? Oh, my God. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Who wants to grow up in this kind of chaos? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. One more time. Just one more time, you guys. Mama my. I didn't feel guilty. I loved it. Thank you for leaving me extra well, pancakes. Well, can you feel guilty with the I'm devil? So happy like I you. Extra pancakes. You are devil. That's why you don't feel guilty. If you are a human being, you feel guilty. Who wants to grow up in this toxic environment? Who? What black girl, honestly, as a black girl, there's already a lot of things we have to deal with. But then to have a mom that's your biggest bully, your biggest enemy, who wants to deal with this? Your mom talking on your YouTube channel about how she wanted to delete you. She went to the hospital and asked the doctor, 
you know, doctor, you know, get rid of this child. And then all of a sudden she was like, okay, I changed my mind. Listen. Thinking about it. And then I said, doctor, I'm sorry. I forget. You forget the whole thing. I don't want it. I changed my mind. And I get up, get out of the thing and I go home. You almost went through with it? Yeah, I went through it. with me? Yeah, I came to see the whole family at that time, Thanksgiving. So I knocked the door. I think if I bring the baby, he might forgive me. As soon as he see you, he get mad. He kicked me out. He said, I never see the ugly, dark baby like that. Okay, this is just f***ed up. Yeah. Black girls, who wants to grow up in this household? Who also wants a mom that's going to disrespect their husband and start putting all her clothes, her wigs, her shoes, and everything inside his closet? And a mom that's going to move into the household without even asking for any permission or even asking the man of the household, you know, like, hey, is it okay with you if I come and stay with you guys? Nope. Who is going to allow this? Listen to Jeannie Mai talking about how her mom just moved in without asking and then started using her husband's closet or her ex-husband's closet, Jeezy. I remember the phone call. I wasn't home, but she flew in and, and Jay was at home. And he, he, he said, babe, your mom just flew in. I got her at the airport. <laughs> how long is she staying again? I was like, I don't know, like a couple days, maybe a week. He's like, there are five luggages, four pack boxes, three wigs, and a whole gang of shoes that she just put in my closet. What do I do? And I was like, dang, and I know her because she's lived with me, remember? Yeah. And, and in the Asian culture, you don't even have to ask. Right. You're in, you know, your mom could go, like, stay with yeah. you guys, and it's no because she's there to care for you, to right. nurture you. That's, not, head, that's like, that's not Jeezy's style, and he's right, not right, short. Right. Like, my mom, like, all of a sudden, walking by him while he's in his shorts, like, she's like, hi, how you know? You know, it's like a weird. Let me ask you, you know, a lot. There's nothing funny about that, okay? There's nothing funny about that. By the way, credits to YouTube star Tisa Tells. She's the one that captured um, that for um, her um, her audience. I'm included in her audience because I'm subscribed to her channel. Um, she is so funny and so interesting. So credits to her for that. By the way, you guys, as well, YouTube channel, the lead attorney is the one that um, talked with the Vietnamese elder, okay? That's the YouTube channel that featured the Vietnamese elder that knows Jeannie Mai. Another thing as well, having a mom that can't keep her hands to herself, okay? Always attacking her husband as well, all right? This is also maybe something that Jeannie Mai was trying to do also to, you know, Jeezy. You never know because her anger and her mom's anger is very similar. Take a look to see how this mom has been married for 15 years, but refuses to live with her husband and was wanting to live the good life at Jeezy's house with Jeannie Mai. Hey. Is... Oh, Say hello. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. Every time Mama Mai is shooting this show, she is away from you. You are all the way in Houston and Mama Mai's here in LA. So I have to thank you because you let me spend so much time with my mom, but then she's not there for you. How are you on that? I'm okay. She, she's, you know, she's doing stuff that she loves, so that's good. So, wait, knowing that I only found out about Uncle Ted two years ago, when you guys have been together for how long? 15, 15 years, years this time. Yeah, 15. I found out two yeah. years ago. Can you tell that that husband, he's also happy that Mama Mai is not around? Okay? You can just tell he's happy that she's not around. Um, you have a husband that's a senior, but you're not even wanting to be there for him in his old age. Jeannie Mai, if you notice something, you guys, the same thing that the mom was doing to her husband is the same thing that Jeannie Mai was doing to her husband too. Living far away from her husband, they weren't living in the same household. Same thing that Mama Mai was doing to her husband. She was actually copying the same relationship dynamic, but not all men look at that as even a relationship to begin with. And that's why he wrote in his divorce papers that they have been living separate for a long time. They haven't even been living like husband and wife. So where do you think Jeannie Mai got that from, Mama Mai? Because her own mother doesn't live with her husband. So how is that traditional? How is that, you know, a family unit? That's not something he also liked, but she never respected what he has to say. That's what I heard. Well, the album, the album says it all, okay? It's all about the album, okay?
the album says it all. Anyway, Jeannie, go get your album. It's out now. Um, another thing as well, although Jeannie does plan to fight dirty to get custody over the child, um, I don't think that she is going, I don't know, just for now, I just don't feel like she might get full custody. I don't know the reason why. Well, I, okay, she might, there's a good chance she will because she's a mom and everything. But um, if Jeezy starts to maybe go in depth of some of the stuff that he was noticing in her parenting and what was happening really in that household, um, it might affect some things. For example, Jeannie Mai talking to the doctor, talking about how the daughter is now attacking people, scratching people, all this kind of stuff. Uh, Jeezy could talk about that. Like, you know, I'm worried about my daughter spending all the time with Jeannie and her family because, you know, she's getting these habits. My daughter's learning these bad habits maybe from, from them. Okay, take a listen. I'm noticing is that when she sees other kids, I don't know how to say this lightly. It's okay. She'd be coming at people. She's coming for necks. She's using nails, hands. I mean, whose child comes for necks? Whose child does that? You guys, whose child comes for people's necks? Whose mom even talks about their child like that? That just... It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. So anyway, um, it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, no, it, it doesn't. Uh, so it's it, when this guy comes out and starts saying she was doing this, she's this kind of mom and all this kind of stuff. I know some people, her fans are going to be shocked if this guy says this is the kind of mother she is. She's good at just taking pictures with our child online and all that kind of stuff. But in reality, this is how she is. Some of her fans are going to be in shock and then they're going to get upset because I saw that happening with the whole Nikki and Jamie situation as well. There are some ladies, they're just, they're so upset of seeing another view. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, I'm just talking about, um, some YouTubers. Okay. Check out my previous videos and you'll see for yourself. I'm talking about, um, Nikki and Jamie. I've been talking about Nikki and Jamie. I've been having, um, some ladies that are upset with me because they want me to side with Nikki. When somebody acts like this, you guys, it's really hard to defend this kind of behavior because some ladies think that Jeannie Mai is an angel. Just like some ladies think that Nikki Thought is an angel. She's a YouTuber, you guys, a YouTube personality, if you don't know, that um, has been exposed by her ex-husband. They were a popular YouTube couple, interracial couple, and he exposed her for being violent, aggressive, a manipulator, and a liar. And some women cannot believe this. Take a look. I never wanted to. I never wanted to tell the story. But this is it. This is where we're at. Come down. Out of the house, Nikki. Please leave. Please leave. Please leave the house, Nikki. Please leave the house. Please leave the house. Please leave the house. This is violence. You've got the kids in your hands. Leave the house right now. This is exactly what he wanted. Leave the house right now. This is exactly what he wanted. This is exactly what he wanted. And look, he's getting video. Leave the house. This he's been planning this. Leave the house. Leave the house. From day one. Leave the house. Leave the house. The children don't deserve to see this. I think you need to take responsibility. Okay, yeah. All right. Leave the house. You guys will never see my kids again. That is You not guys will never see my kids again. That will not. Ever. That will not happen. Will happen. Leave no. the house. Look at you guys. Leave the house. Look at you guys. Look, Leave the so house. Serious. Look. So, um, yeah. So anyway, you guys, on the channel, I've been talking about this YouTube couple that everybody admired because of their interracial relationship and because of their appearance, their looks, their attractiveness. Um, but they were faking it on camera, pretending to be in a happy relationship when they weren't. And so a lot of women are really upset um, because I just don't subscribe to her behavior and all this kind of stuff. And this guy has provided a lot of receipts. And that's the reason why I, um, I, I do believe he's telling majority of the truth. Until now, she has nothing to defend herself with because she knows that she has 
been like this towards this guy. And the stuff that she has said has just been so horrible. And if Jeezy was to share a lot of things about Jeannie Mai to you guys, a lot of her fans will, will be in disbelief and they'll even make some excuses. Also, the first time in my life I've heard about reactive, um, reactive, being reactive. Like they're saying that her behavior is all reactive. So it means it's okay because she was triggered. So it's a reactive behavior. But who talks to somebody like this? The father of your children. Listen. Police station. You Where have to. Up? You have to. You actually have to. You don't care about these kids. No, it proves I do because I'm I'm protecting their safety. I'm the one protecting their safety. The thought of a police last time. Did you not hear her last time? I'm protecting the children from their safety. You've been violent. You've hit me in front of them. You've you've abused me in front of them. That does not make them violent people. Let me remind you right now who you are. You are not shit. You ain't never been shit from day one. You will never be shit, you motherfucker. Try me. Fucking keep trying me. I'm not trying you. I'm trying to be fair and I'm trying to protect my safety and the kids' safety. How would you keep me from even knowing where Ava goes to kinder? Like, do you know how hard it was? No, that's for my own safety. I don't trust you 100%. Like, let's be real. Let's Over be the years, the only person who's ever been violent is you. Like, there's no yeah, reason well, for you saying. to not... The only person who's ever been violent is you. Like, there's no yeah, well, reason I'm for you saying. to not trust me. Like, what have I ever because done? you have a whole lot more to lose than me, yeah? Like, I have a whole lot more to lose than you. What I'm saying. There's, there's like, nothing... You don't have family, you don't have friends, like you're kind of depressed right now, whatever. You know, you don't have your kids, like you can act up. Okay, so basically, um, again, people thought she was an angel, okay? Just like people think Jeannie Mai is an angel. Now a lot of women are really upset because she has been exposed for you know, her true colors and all that kind of stuff. And she was actually cheating on this guy with her ex-boyfriend. Okay. And that was also exposed too. And now she is also coming after um, people in her own community for exposing her. And the fact that she has been dealing with this um, black guy from the Sudanese community. That's her boyfriend. Okay. So it, it's just tragic. All right. It's just, yeah, the guy found everything. Her boyfriend, Jamie, found out everything, that she was sending this guy stuff on his phone, doing all the scandalous stuff behind her his back while she was married. But because she thought the guy that she was married to is white, he's not going to be able to figure out all the stuff that she's doing behind his back. And you guys, this is the credible source is her own husband. When I'm telling you these stories, I am talking, this is actually him. He's saying this stuff, not me. Take a listen. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the video of Nikki at my house and what happened. Nikki said that she had come to my house to get clothes and that I'd been calling her all sorts of names and that's how all that happened and what she was doing was reactive. So at this point in time, Nikki had already moved out of the house and things were pretty rocky. Our marriage counselor at the time had advised me to send her a text and say, I think we should spend two weeks apart not talking about anything other than the kids, because everything was just leading to arguments. And I felt like we needed a clear head and some time apart so that we could get together and, and speak rationally. And I sent her this text message. She had liked it, so I assumed she had agreed to it. And the point she came to my house was one week after that, so we hadn't finished our two weeks apart. She had called my mum that morning and let her know that she was gonna be dropping Zoe off at the house. Ava was already there. And I'd only found out about 10 minutes before she got there, my mum had passed on the message. Now, when Nikki got to the house, I was laying on the couch. She walked in, she dropped Zoe off, and she asked me to come out the front and speak to her about some things. I said, it's only been a week. We've still got another week to go. And she said, I want to talk now. We're going to talk, get outside and talk. And I kept refusing. And she picked Ava up. She walked up the stairs. She took her up to her room because I guess she didn't want her seeing all of this. And as she was going up the stairs, she told me, if you're not outside, ready to talk to me by the time I get down these stairs, I'm going to punch you in the effing head. And I wasn't budging. And she came storming back down the stairs. I was still on the couch. She got on top of me. She hit me multiple times and my mum picked up Zoe and she took her to the kitchen and she was getting her out of that situation and was getting her some snacks to keep her calm. And at that point, Nikki went through to the other room and that's when I picked up the phone. I was at a point in time where I was finally starting to tell some of the people in my life, some of the things I had been experiencing that I hadn't told people before. And it felt like nobody believed me. 
So I felt like I needed some evidence. I also needed it for myself as well. For anybody who's been in a situation like this, who's had a person tell you things that happened, never happened, you would know not only the frustration you feel, but the questioning you feel of your own reality. And that's what I was going through because she had been telling me for years things that had happened, never happened. And I needed to know that this really was happening. I needed to be able to prove it. And that's why I recorded that moment and I was gonna call the police and I got talked out of it, I never did. She stayed at the house for another three and a half hours. There was a lot of ranting. Um, it was a really full on day. Other people ended up at the house as well. And I later found out that the reason that she was so angry when she got to the house was she was dropping Zoe off because after she dropped Zoe off, she was gonna go and have a confrontation with someone who was an old friend of hers who had been sharing some stories about her and her ex-boyfriend around the Sudanese community. And at this point in time, I hadn't heard any of these stories that had been spread around the Sudanese community. I found out some stuff myself, but I didn't know about any of this other stuff that was going on at this point in time. I do have a recording of this. I'm not getting other people involved. It can be verified. And that's why she was at my house that day and why she was in such a volatile mood because she was blaming this old friend of hers. Wow. So anyway, check out my playlist. Uh, Jamie and Nikki, and you will find out more. Um, there's a lot of mixed feelings because some people just don't want to believe that Nikki did this, even though there's video footages, receipts. She also apologized. He shared a text of her apologizing for attacking him. But some ladies still don't want to believe that she acted like this. And now they're using the word reactive, that her behavior is reactive. What? How is it reactive? That, that's what she did. That's what she wanted to do. Um, that's her own choice. She's done this from the beginning until the end of the relationship, you guys. But anyway, I'm not going to even try to convince people. Some people, if they like somebody, no matter what bad things they do, they're still going to continue to support that person, right? Um, and for me, Nikki has no receipts. She has nothing to defend her behavior. Um, I do wish Jamie all the best. And I believed him the first time because I always felt that she was not herself on camera. Um, and yeah, now we're here. Okay. So anyway, check them, check them out on my playlist and you can hear my commentary um, on that. Don't listen if you agree with Nikki's behavior and you subscribe to that and you think it's okay to treat someone like that don't listen to my commentary on that because you're just going to be disappointed um, because I, I think that that's who she really is. And um, she needs to be careful behaving like this as well, because um, now there's, he has so much receipts on her since they got married until now. So um, she has to watch the way she behaves because who knows, you never know. Um, this guy might take away the children um, if she if she continues to show that she's unfit, unstable, has serious issues, then that might happen. So back to Jeannie Mai. If Jeezy sees that Jeannie tries to fight him dirty in court and all that kind of stuff, I think he has receipts on her too to show that she is just unstable and all over the place. Her family household is also all over the place. Her situation he probably doesn't like the fact that she has people in and out of that house all the time, you know, or whatever, people that maybe he doesn't even really know. And Jeannie just seems like that type of person because she just seems, I don't know, she just, you know, you guys know how she is, okay? Anyway, I know some of you guys are like, no, don't say that about Jeannie. First of all, the reason why I say that is because if you have a mom that's toxic, a mom that let's just be honest for her to call Jeannie saying that she has a devil face and all this kind of stuff, the way she treats Jeannie compared to her other siblings is not the same. And I noticed that the other siblings are lighter in complexion than Jeannie. The mom never expected Jeannie Mai to amount to much because, you know, in her community, she's not that attractive, you know, allegedly, according to, you know, some Vietnamese, if you're dark, you're ugly automatically just being dark is ugly being dark also symbolizes you're bad you're not good okay i've had people also write me and tell me that that they had some asians that they worked with that were calling them ugly because they were dark they said you're ugly because you're dark that's what makes you ugly 
and they think that this is this is right. Okay. By the way, I played for you guys this clip from 90 Day Fiance, a Vietnamese woman that was dating an African American man, and she was calling him ugly and bad. And she also called him uh, dark as well, or something like that. Dark, ugly, bad, and fat. Okay. Um, and he had to warn her in this episode. Take a look. You call me fat and ugly in front of people. Asshole. What? I say you are ugly, you are very bad. You really said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you see how she's just laughing? By the way, she also called him old. Okay, old, ugly, bad. All of that, the African-American man said, because I'm dark, okay, because I'm dark, you're calling me ugly and I'm all this kind of stuff. Where I come from, you don't talk to people like that. But that's Violet and Riley. By the way, the African-American man um, was so desperate, but he finally decided to break up with her. But I want you guys to hear her laughing at calling the guy that is dating her that's been you know sending her money from america this guy went from america all the way to vietnam and was sending stuff for her daughters as well okay and he was going to sponsor her to america give her a better life all this kind of stuff but still she thought she was better than him Okay, just listen to her laugh, you guys. It's the laugh that gets me every time. You call me fat and ugly in front of people. Asshole. What? I say you are ugly, you are very bad. You really said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Oh my God, her laugh. Wow. These people can be really cold. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow, 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 you guys. Just wow. Anyway, let me get going. <laughs> wow. So I think that Jeannie Mai and her family members were talking behind Jeezy's back as well. He does not know the language. And that's the thing. You guys, I go get my nails done at these places. They're always talking in their language. All right? So um, <laughs> they're always talking in their language. So, um, yeah, I would not be surprised if they were talking about him behind his back and all that kind of stuff as well. Oh, my goodness. But the daughter knows Vietnamese, the Vietnamese language. They've taught the daughter um, how to speak the Vietnamese language, right? So the daughter, after a while, maybe she started to understand what Mama Mai and Jeannie Mai were saying behind Jeezy's back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Anyway, I don't feel sorry for him, you guys. I don't feel sorry for Jeezy. Uh, this is your choice, sir. This is what you decided to do. And so you have to deal with it. Um, so you can cry about it, you know, cry a river on your album. Just make your money, of course, because you love your money. Um, and you're going to make your money. So that's great. You're going to make that money. You're going to help Jeannie Mai take care of the child. And you also have other children as well with three different women from my understanding. So yeah, so I feel like, you know what, at least he's capitalizing from his heartbreak in this album. And by the way, people are saying great things about this album. They are saying that the album is fantastic, you guys. Amazing reviews, okay? Some people are just saying it's amazing. I, I saw somebody write that the album is so great and everything like that. So anyway, he's doing what he does best is about making the money. OK, so he's making the money. So good for him. But this was his choice. And sometimes some some guys don't ask questions. They don't take their time to, like, really get to know a woman if they think somebody is, you know, attractive or good looking like that's enough, you know, but. He did it to himself. I don't feel sorry for him, but I am excited for him making his money because that's always his goal. You know, these rappers, they love money. So, um yeah, so it is what it is. Um, oh, by the way, if uh, I think D. John was asking about the grandpa. Uh, D. John, regarding the grandpa, uh, yeah, the grandpa, Mama Mai took Jeannie Mai home for Thanksgiving. 
And her dad, first the dad told her to delete Jeannie, okay? At the beginning. She already was trying to get rid of Jeannie Mai. Okay. Um, yeah, Mama Mai was trying to get rid of Jeannie Mai before she was born. Okay. And then after that, when the her dad, Mama Mai's dad, the grandpa saw Jeannie Mai, said that she was dark and ugly and wanted just her to get rid of her, get her out of the house. She, and like the dad wishes that she wasn't even around. Jeannie Mai says that the her grandpa and grandma have serious anger issues. So does her mom. And so does she. So now I guess the daughter, the Jeezy's daughter with her, with her that they have together, um, also is having anger issues too. Okay. According to Jeannie Mai, she's already projecting that on her own daughter. So yeah, when the dad saw that her skin was dark, um, said that she was ugly. So for them, you know, being dark automatically equals ugly, like boom, like that's it. You know, no questions asked, like that's it. So imagine what uh, people in the Vietnamese community were thinking when she got with Jeezy. They're not only calling her a ghetto Asian, but they're like, oh my God, how can you be with a black guy? You know, you are better off being with the, um, with the white guy because you guys know in their community, they value whiteness. Okay, they value whiteness. So um, the fact that even I think some Asian people that were watching the whole dynamics of Jeannie Mai going to go beg a black guy to be with her, this was also embarrassing too. And I think that that was also something that was, you know, very tragic. But this is where I feel also Jeezy himself. He felt honored to be part of this family because he thought they were a traditional Vietnamese family. This is where he went wrong. He was first putting this, like thinking marrying into this family, like this is going to be a traditional household. Jeannie Mai is going to be submissive to him and all this kind of stuff. No. Jeannie Mai only started to beg after this man decided to walk away. Okay, that's when she started to beg and was like, okay, yes, I'm going to change. I will do whatever I need to do. I don't want to lose this, all this kind of stuff. It was too late. The man already had a change of heart. But Jeannie never thought that this guy can walk away from her. That's the thing. She never expected him to walk away. Because she thought she was special. But the thing is, when you deal with these guys that have been through so much in their life, cutting people off is not a problem for them. Okay, let's just be honest. For a man like this, cutting people off is nothing for them. Nothing will keep him. A child will not keep him. Uh, nothing is going to keep him. But money might keep him. He might. Money might keep him for something because he loves money. But aside from that, he is not going to take any kind of disrespect from anybody men or man or woman. And plus, this is also a black man. Jeannie Mai thought that she could treat this guy the same way she treated the white guy, the first husband. Now people in her community know for sure that she's the problem. They now know that she's the problem. And I'm sure Mama Mai is telling her, this is your fault. You keep, you know, she even said that, you guys. She even said that Jeezy does not care about your relationship with him, that Jeezy hangs out with her and they have such a great time together. Yes, the album is a double album. That's right, Tarsha. Great to see you. It's a double album. There's two parts to it, you guys. This is um, his story. This is his dedication to Jeannie Mai. He did not dedicate his book to Jeannie Mai, but the album, you guys, has been dedicated to her. Okay, Jeannie? So not the book, but I can officially say that you, you got credit in the album, okay? So just go get your album because this is, this is released specifically for you, okay? This album is not for the fans. It is for Jeannie Mai. It's very clear. It is for Jeannie Mai. Okay. Wow. 
You guys, I agree with Soriaz. Soriaz, what you said earlier, Jeannie Mai feeling embarrassed that this rapper broke up with her. You guys, I would too. Oh my God. Oh, imagine if a rapper broke up with you. Oh my God. How would that feel? Like, how would you feel, ladies? I remember when I was young, when the movie Dangerous Minds came out, and I really liked that rapper, Coolio. My parents were like, what? And I won, and I won, okay? There was like, there was a place called Music World when I was in grade six, and I won this, um, my school, I was in elementary, grade six, and I won this, um, like a gift card. It was a gift card to a place called Music World. It was my first time to go there. And you can like get, you know, they have cassettes and stuff like that and everything. It's a store, kind of like there was a store called HMV. But anyway, so I went there and I got that Dangerous Minds cassette and everything. And I like that guy. So just imagining. And then later in my life, I realized, oh, my God, like that guy is not, <laughs> that is not the kind of even guys that I, <laughs> I like in real life. You know, once I became, you know, a teenager and stuff, nobody I've ever been with is like that kind of guy. But I just like the song so much. And I just thought, oh, wow, like, oh, my God, like this guy it, this guy is really cool, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and I think he did a song with like, yeah, he had a CD as well. And then he had another song called Come Along and Ride on the Something Fantastic Slide, <laughs> something like that. So I was just like, oh my God, this guy is so cool. And um, so my parents were just like also really upset with me because I got that kind of cassette and they, I was not allowed to watch that movie as well okay because it was on pay-per-view there was a thing called pay-per-view my parents would not allow me to watch stuff like that and they were just like in shock they thought it was a I was buying like a girl cd like you know a cd for girls or something like that with music but they didn't know it was a hip-hop kind of song and then I never seen that cassette again I was playing it all the time and I never seen it again I think my mom got rid of it because she always cleaned my room because she's a housewife. So she was always cleaning the house and cleaning after us and all that kind of stuff. So she always, you know, cleans my room and stuff like that. Well, my room's already clean, but you know what I mean, deep cleaning and stuff like that. And then she goes through my stuff. And then she, I believe she threw out my uh, cassette. So just to imagine like now in my life, like let's just say someone like Coolio, if I was married to someone like that and he broke up with me, oh my goodness, I would feel really bad about myself. For a rapper to break up with you, that means that you really, wow. <laughs> you, as a woman, there's something you really failed in. You did something, oh my gosh. Because one thing for sure, like if you guys notice something about some of these rappers, they like to always deal with very loyal women and women that are like, you know what I mean? They will always put these guys first and all that kind of stuff. Like women who really cater to them and all that kind of stuff. If you really take a look, the women that they trust are women that listen to them. Okay. And treat them really well and all that kind of stuff. So if they have to get rid of you, it's because you are very disrespectful. Okay. It's because you are extremely disrespectful. When I heard of, when he, I heard him say that he's more classier than Jeannie Mai and that he has to tell her to stop yelling at people, that's when I knew, wow, this guy has really grown. Jeannie Mai is not how she presents herself on television. Anyway, I should stop talking because I know Jeannie, my fans are going to get so upset. Um, so, yeah, they're going to get upset and be like, oh, my gosh. Like some lady also wrote me and she was like, you know, the way you just go after Jeannie Mai, like, you know, you are so um, hard on her and all this kind of stuff. No, I'm not, you guys. Um, I always felt that Jeannie Mai did not even know who she was on the real. I wasn't even a fan of hers. OK, so it's not like that. Um, she's the one that's begging. I've never seen, I've never talked about a black lady going to go beg her, her rapper husband to take her back. It's because she did something wrong. That was automatic. That was, that showed me automatically for a lady to go and beg this guy to come back. She did something. 
So that's why I couldn't side with her. And that's why this album is dedicated to her. This is his moment to let the world know that she is unfaithful. She cannot be trusted. She's not even for the streets, he says, that she shouldn't even be in the streets. She should be in the ground somewhere. Women like her, allegedly. Also very delusional. That's another word he used. So, I mean, you guys, it's just hard. It's hard because um, the receipts just don't lie, all right? And it's like all the stuff I've shown you guys, what else can I do? What else can I do? Okay, Jeannie Mai herself said that she was very dominant. How can you say you're dominant and at the same time, you know, it, this is her own quote. Jeannie Mai says, I'm a very dominant woman. I don't think that's what Jeezy wanted. Okay. I own my businesses. I lead my teams. I played my own manager, my own publicist, my own lawyer when I didn't have money to have those people. Okay. So. And then just. She was fighting with herself, you guys, because she wants to be dominant. Then she also wanted to be submissive. I knew her anger was going to come out. Okay. I knew her anger was eventually going to come out and all that kind of stuff. And it did. And so he saw it and he walked away. You guys, this is really easy to figure this stuff out. Like it's so easy. It's not hard. It's not hard. It's easy to figure this out. It's so easy to put together the story. I don't even need to know them. I don't even know these people, and it's easy for me to figure out what happened. Okay? How do you talk about being dominant and all this kind of stuff, and you're so dominant, you're this? Well, you can be dominant in the workplace and all that kind of stuff and a manager, but you're not a manager in your house. You're not a boss in your house. You're part of the family. Everyone's role matters. And you should respect everybody in your household. So then she says, hey, right here um, that I, um, so she said, hey, right here that I, Jeannie Mai, going into my marriage, I want to submit to my man. And it's like, what? You did not. Stop lying. You did not. Making him the cucumber salad was, that's just not enough. She did not, you guys. She said she was going to. She did not. And it just does not make sense. She wanted to be something she wasn't. And, I mean, you guys, this is not hating. These are her own quotes. This is her own quotes. Just some of the stuff she was doing also in Jeezy's house. Just strange. Very bizarre. You know, some black men are not into the sage stuff and all this, you know, talking about, oh, there's evil energy, all this. Let's start putting smoke and light up your house and all that kind of stuff. Some black men are not into all this kind of things. They don't even believe in all this. But Jeannie Maya was trying to act like there's an energy, bad energy just happening around them when she was really the bad energy herself. She was the one that was also toxic in the relationship because her own mom said that Jeezy is a calm guy. He is cool. Her own mom, you guys, her own mom. I mean, oh, you guys, I, I've talked about Jeannie Mai for a while. You guys know that it's hard to defend Jeannie Mai because when her own mom says that Jeezy was actually calm and everything, that Jeannie is responsible for destroying things with her family and all that kind of stuff. Take a listen. Oh, I can't, you are my daughter. Why are you yelling at me in front to Papa Mai and in front to Jeannie? You make him feel bad too. You screw up the whole thing, everyone upset. So you think I'm the one make the people upset? No, you are the one. GJ, he's generous. He won't let me go home. He keep talk, 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 talk about the weather, talk about the uh, uh, cooking, talk about whatever, talk everything. 
He used a Kylo G with me. Forget about them. Here, you and me, shake, 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 and drinking whatever. He, he don't care about you guys at all, okay? That's how he used a Kylo G with me. That's a very smart guy. Really cool. Cool, you know, like not cool the gang. Cool, really, um, how to say in English? Um, surf oh. and cool. Come, he really, he, to come, to come, okay? So finally, I go because of him. That's why I came. It's not because of you. Wow. There you have it. Okay. This mom said that she wasn't even coming around Jeannie just to come around her, but because of her husband, Jeezy. You know, that's powerful. So are we going to say that her own mom is not credible? Wow. You guys, I have to listen to Dijon at this moment and we need to put the cucumber salad. Um, she did try, you guys. That's when she was trying to be submissive, but she didn't even listen because her chef, the chef, Jeezy. Oh, yeah, I told you guys as well how she tried to get rid of the chef. The chef who actually knows what Jeezy likes to eat. Okay, tried to teach her. The, his favorite dishes. And she thought that it's not worth it for Jeezy to pay this man any money. When this guy is responsible for actually helping Jeezy lose weight. Jeezy likes to eat proteins in his diet. He likes to eat grilled shrimp and grits. And that's a staple African-American dish that African-Americans eat, you guys. But Jeannie Mai thought that she can just be feeding him mostly, you know, her dishes. And it wasn't going to work. Another thing as well, I think she didn't want the guy to keep losing weight, building all the muscle and stuff, because it was attracting a lot of the girls. Okay. And this chef was really helping. The chef was really helping um, him shred the, shred the weight because Jeezy's also his other favorite dish is smoked, uh, smoked uh, chicken. Okay. Uh, sorry, smoked turkey. Okay. That's what you see. The chef is trying to show Jeannie. She was not serious, you guys. She was taking this whole marriage for granted. She really was. Okay. She really was. You know, and like I said, I've given her credit, you guys. Um, I do believe that she tried. She tried to, you know, cook for him and all that kind of stuff. She she did try. Um, but, I mean, for me, I just, I, mm, it, it was, it was just not enough. Um, also trying to get rid of a chef. Some guys have a good relationship with, um, you know, the people that they are close to and all that kind of stuff, especially if they're dealing with someone that brings them really good results. Why would a man want to get rid of someone that brings them great results? You know what I mean? Why would they want to do that? This is a special dedication, you guys. Jeannie Mai cooking, but she was not cooking the right meals. As you can see here, Dijon, this is for you. <laughs> John says, Sunday, show the pic of him eating the cucumber salad. You guys, this man was not impressed. It's so obvious. It is so obvious. He needs to eat something hearty. Most black men are not even interested in salads and all this kind of stuff. I don't know the ones that are interested in this. They like to eat more of protein, hearty diet. Okay? So, Jeannie Mai, this soy sauce. Soy sauce, sesame seeds, cucumber. This is not going to be helping him build muscle and feel fuller longer and all that kind of stuff. She does not listen. She doesn't listen, but she did try. She did try, you guys, but she doesn't listen. Okay? This is, did you see him here? He was started losing also his muscles once he was also with her. Did you see the definition was gone? So she doesn't listen. She doesn't follow instruction. 
she didn't listen to the chef, wanted to get rid of the chef. And it's like, no, no. It's, it's just no. So he's still with his chef, you guys. Jeezy never fired his chef. His chef is still serving him meals and everything. He was not going to get rid of his chef um, just to have Jeannie Mai. Hi, everyone. Can you guys still hear me? <laughs> Sorry, I lost you guys for a second. Are you guys still with me? Comment if you can hear me. Bear with me, you guys. Almost there, I think. Hopefully, no. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure. I'm trying to... The screen is black. I don't know how to... How to change that. Do you guys know anything about this? <laughs> I don't know how to change it. I don't know how to, um, I see it, but it's like black. The background is black and I'm selecting my images and it won't allow me to. You guys, this is what I get, I guess. Jeannie Mai is probably watching and is like, okay, let me contact the executives over at YouTube. This has got to stop. <laughs> this girl has talked enough about me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know what to do. Why is the screen black, you guys? This is the question. Hmm. I don't know how to fix this. I, I have to learn, you guys. I do have to learn. 
I have to learn how to do these things because I should, I should, I should learn. Um, but I just don't know, like, um, I just don't know much about this kind of stuff. I don't know much about it. So I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to, okay, I guess I'm just having no luck, you guys. I don't know, how do I do this? Did I go to the settings? Yes, I went to the settings and I did visual background. Um, yeah, I, I did that. And then for some reason where I always select my background image, it's not allowing me to do it anymore. So I don't know, did I destroy the system? I'm not sure. Anyway, you guys, maybe I'll head out, um, but hopefully this brings back memories for some of you. My screen being black, this is how we used to do the Midnight Society for years on my channel. I never used to have even images on the screen because I didn't know how to do that. So I think it's also great. Being in the darkness is also nice too, having a black background because it takes me back to us remembering where we all started with the Midnight Society during these lives. So I just wanna thank all of you guys for being present and for listening to another view. I appreciate your contribution on this topic. Um, if you have any video ideas or um, any stories that you'd like me to discuss on the channel, I'll be more than happy to deliver please feel free to connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok at Sunday Omni. It's been fun. <laughs> Sincerely, thank you so much for your patience. And hopefully in the next live, I'll be able to fix these technical difficulties. I do have a lot to learn, you guys. I'm not really educated uh, about all of this. I'm not a technical person really that much. Like, I don't know a lot about these programs. So I'm just grateful that this year is when I learned it. So I appreciate that. But I will try my best to learn and to do better moving forward as well. Thank you so much to all of you who are present and for your time. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend as well and have a peaceful morning. Until our next conversation. Cheers.